the power of God was unleashed in the whole world. I'm talking about the whole world. The blood, the blood that he shed on the cross, the blood that he, he shed for you and me. Listen, there's no, there is no other answer. I don't care what they tell you. You can go to, you can go to the psychologist or you can go all over the place looking for an answer. They'll put a band-aid over your problem. But I don't want to, I don't want a band-aid over my problem. Band-aids fall off. I want the answer. I want the total answer to life. The Bible says to us in the book of 1 John, it says, he, he has brought us from death to life. From darkness to light. Come on. From death to life. From darkness to light. We were in darkness. Brother, listen to me. We had no hope. We were, we were so messed up from the floor up. We didn't know whether we were coming or going. Nobody believed us. We were liars. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. Every one of you sitting here. We were, we were lost. We were sinners. Every single person was lost. Born in sin. And Jesus... Jesus, the Son of God, the pure blood, the Lamb of God, pure blood, was spilled on a cross for you and me. And I want to tell you, Andre Crown sang a song years ago that said, the blood has never lost its power. It reaches to the highest mountain and to the lowest valley. I want to tell you, it reaches to all mankind. I don't care if you're rich or poor. I don't care if you're down and out. I don't care where you're at. It reaches to you today. Listen to me. He's reaching out by the blood that he shed on the cross. And the Bible says that that power, his unmeasurable power, was unleashed that day when he raised him from the dead. When he got up from there, listen, there was no limit, no limit to what was going to happen. No limit to what he could do. And he, listen to me, and, it, and in case you don't know it, he's sitting right there with you. Don't crowd him out. Don't, don't crowd him out. Don't, don't, don't tell him, come on, move over, Jesus. Get closer. He's sitting right there with you. I have some men that I, I had prepared back there. And I'm going to have him come. I'm going to have him come in. You're going to find that the soldiers are different this time. They're dressed in 21st century clothing. I didn't give them real whips because that poor guy would be yelling right now. You know how sinners are. You might say, how come they're not wearing Roman soldier uniforms and helmets? Well, you see, you see, it wasn't the Romans that killed him. It wasn't, it wasn't, in fact, are you with me? The Jews, they said it was the Jews, but actually it was the father. It was the father that sent his son to die for us. It was the father, it was God the father that gave his son to die for us, he, 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 are you with me, church? He gave his own son up as a sacrifice for you and I. It, listen, why? Because you see these men, they're dressed, they're not dressed in Roman clothing, but, but, but they're sinners. Why did Jesus come? You see, no matter how good you are, how good you think you are, and so many, in so, some way or another, sometimes we think, we say, well, I'm, I'm not hurting nobody with the way I do things, and, not, and, 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 no, and nobody's offended by me, and nobody's, no, no, listen, none of that was good enough. We, we all, every one of us that are in this building and through the whole world, we all were the ones actually nailing those nails in that cross. We, we were the ones that put him there. 
we're, we're the ones that, that put Jesus there. We nailed him there. We crucified him. And then we, we put on our suits and our good clothing. We raised him up. We raised him up. And we went along with our lives. But we really, really never really surrendered our hearts to him. How many know there's, there's many of us in this room today, there's many of us through this whole place who have never really surrendered our hearts to Jesus. Some of us have even prayed a sinner's prayer, but after we prayed that prayer, we walked out and we went right back to our old lifestyles. Because, listen to me, I never really opened the door of my heart to the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Because I want to tell you something. The day you feel the resurrection power of Jesus, you'll never be the same. You can't be. You, you cannot be. You can't be the same. I know, I know the day I felt the power of God touch my life. When I got up from that altar, it was over. Never again. It's been, it's been over 40 years. I've never gone back to drugs. Never again. I've never drank any more alcohol. I've, ne I don't, I've never even smoked a cigarette. Not even one of those fake ones. I don't need no patch. I got the real deliverer. I know him by name. Is there anybody here? I said, is there anybody here? Now, now I want to say this to you. I want you to hear what I'm going to say to you. It was, it was, it was needed that he died. It was, it was needed that he come. He came and he healed, he delivered, he fed hungry people. He did a lot of good things in life. But his main, his main mission was to come and die on a cross. That was his main mission, was to come and die on a cross. It wasn't, it wasn't for any other reason but to come and die for the sins of the whole world. What brought sickness and disease and poverty? What brought, brings hopelessness? What brings disaster to families? What brings breakup of marriages? What brings children and fathers to, to be at odds at each other? And what brings all these things? Listen to me. It originated in the Garden of Eden and it's called sin. And God had to bring His Son. God had to send His Son. The Bible says He loved the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son that who would ever believe in Him would not perish. What, what does that mean? What does that mean, not perish? Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. You would experience the resurrection power. The unmeasurable power of Jesus Christ. You would experience that power. You would never be the same. Your name would be written in the Lamb's book of life forever. You would be destined, instead of being destined for hell, you would be destined for heaven. Your destiny would change. Your future would change. Come on, is there anybody here? You would never be the same. You'd have the power to resist, to resist the enemy. When he resurrected from the dead, he gave you the power to resist the devil. Resist temptation. Resist it. Are you with me, church? When, when, when I first got saved, when I first got saved, somebody came up to me. You know, I had... See, how many know that when, you, when you're not saved, everybody wants your money and everybody wants to use you? 
But if you get saved, the devil sends everything to you for free. And I'm, I'm cutting weeds outside the, the parking lot with my, my, my pastor, my new pastor. And I'm so in love with God. And, 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 I'm, and I know I'm free. And, and I'm so high on the Lord. And, and, and this guy comes up to me and he calls me to the street. And he tells me, Ray, I got some dope for you. Look, I'll give it to you. And he puts his hand in his pocket and he shows it to me. He says, here, I want, I'll give it to you. I looked at him and I said, no, man. I said, you know what? I got something better. And he looked at me with a frown. He thought he was the only one with the better stuff. He said, what do you mean better? Better than this. I said, oh, way better, bro. He says, well, yeah, what is it? He said, Jesus. The resurrection power. Is there anybody with me today? He'll fix your home. He'll fix your home. Listen to me. There are families here. There are families here. You go home. You, when you're out in the open, man, you guys are lovey-dovey and all that man. Everybody they look at you like if you were a, a, one of those Snow White and the Seven Dwarf stories. <laughs> but when you go home, it's a different thing. Somebody told me that the other day, somebody, somebody told me, I'm praying my husband will change. I said, no, 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 no. I said, don't pray that. I said, you pray, you change. Let him pray, he changes. How many know if you, if you let him change you, your home will come together? Come on. How many know peace will come in? Joy, love. Come on. Everything you need will come in. Is there anybody with me today? You, you, the turmoil will leave. The devil will have to walk out the door. The resurrection power. Unmeasurable. Can't, there's no measure to it, brother. You can't, you can't put a measuring tape to it. It's unmeasurable. Amen. Has no limit. No matter what your need is, no matter what it is you're going through right now in your life, the Lord can fix it. I said, the Lord can fix it. Amen. See, some of you came with, with, with the intention of saying, well, today's Easter, so today I go to church. How many know that every day is Easter? Yeah. And that don't mean you eat boiled eggs every day. But it means, it, means you, it means you walk in the resurrection power of Jesus every day. Every day. Every day it's real. Every day it's alive. Come on, every day it's alive. Look at your neighbor saying, Jesus is alive. He raised, he came to life. He resurrected from the dead. He's not dead, he's alive. He's real. Listen, there's nothing greater, nothing greater in life than Jesus. Nothing, nothing, nothing more powerful. Nothing more powerful than Jesus. Nothing. Nothing more powerful. If you're going to give him praise, give him praise. Go ahead and put him, put him in the tomb. <laughs> Jesus, there was a must. He had to resurrect. How many know he had to come? He had to resurrect. He had to come back to life. If, listen, listen to me today. If Jesus had not resurrected, if he had not resurrected, he'd be like all the other gods. Powerless. Powerless. Have you ever asked yourself, why is it 
that they hate Jesus so much, but they don't hate no other God? Have you ever wondered? Ask yourself, how, why do they hate him so much? Don't go name your, don't go name your kid Jesus, the stone. Imagine they hate that name so much because every time that name is mentioned, the Bible says it like this, that every time the name of Jesus is mentioned, the devils tremble. There's power. Power in that name. Real joy, real happiness, real fulfillment, real contentment comes through Christ. Listen, if you're trying to find real, real contentment in a person, in a man, a woman, you missed it. You're going to have a blacklist, a black book. I already tried this one, cross about. Won't work. Won't work. Because there's only one. That can give you real joy and real peace and real happiness and real contentment of life. Real satisfaction of life. Come on. How many know his name is Jesus? He's the only one. There's nobody else. No matter how we, how we look at it, no one else can do that. We're trying to make that other person do what only God can do. And you're missing it. So he had to die. He had to resurrect. Say it with me. He had to come back to life. Otherwise he'd be powerless. Amen. He had to die. He had to, seclu- he had to secure my victory. Say secure my victory. His resurrection gives me, gives me something to believe in. Something to put my faith in. How many understand that? How many of you, how many of you have ever heard Buddha appearing to somebody? Or Allah? Or Hare Krishna? Huh? Or Pope John? No. But I'll tell you something, all over the world, even in the Muslim world right now, Jesus is appearing to a lot of people and they're coming to him. Yes, give the Lord praise. He's alive. Say he's alive. He's the reason to believe. Without the resurrection, you'd have no peace. Amen. Without the resurrection, you'd have no miracles, no power. There'd be nothing. Nothing for you. When we pray here, I was telling the prayer team the other night, we're here. I said, you know what? You know why we can pray here? I said, because he's not not dead. He's alive. How many know, how many know here today that when you pray, he hears you? How many believe he hears you when you pray? Let me, let me say this to you. Dead gods don't believe and can't hear. See, so, so if he weren't resurrected, we'd be praying in vain. But because we know he's alive. Because we've experienced his resurrection power. We've experienced it. Because of that, when we pray, we know he hears us. And we know he moves. Come on, give him praise. We know he does. We know he does. He moves. He delivers. I want to say something to you. You know how I know he's alive? 
because you're sitting right there. He brought you. How many know He brought you? You got up this morning, took a shower, put some perfume, whatever it took, and you says, I'm going to church, and you thought, I'm, I'm going to church, and the Lord says, no, I'm taking you there. Now I want to say this to all of you here this morning. There's only one way to heaven. I want you to see this, these two scriptures with me this morning. I want them to go with me to Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. I want you to see this, this scripture with me. And then we're going to another one. And I want you to see what the Lord says this morning to every one of us. He says, for my determined purpose, this is Paul talking, is that I may know him. That I may know him. That I, that I may get to know him better than I do today. That I may get to know him more intimately. He says, may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. Perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. And that I may in the same way come to know the power. Look at this. May come to know the power, the outflowing from his resurrection. That I may get to know, I want to know the power that raised him from the dead. I want to experience that power. He was dead, but it gave him life. Amen. I want to experience that power. Man, there's, how, many, how many understand that, that the Lord, listen to me, the Lord wants you and I to walk in resurrection power. He doesn't want us to walk in death. Is there anybody with me? He, he gave he gave Jesus life. The Holy Spirit walked into that tomb the third day and raised him up. Amen. Gave him life. Hallelujah. Resurrected him. Yeah. Powerful. Power. Power brought him back to life. Listen, Paul is saying here, I want to know that, that the power and the outflowing from his resurrection... I want to know that power. And I want to say this to you, church. You know why it's important for you to know him and know that power of his resurrection? Because it's that power that destroys all the powers of darkness. It destroys all the powers of the enemy. Every attack of the devil is thwarted through that power. Are you with me today, church? There's no measure, there's no limit to his power. None at all. And Paul is saying, I want to know that power. I want to know it. I want to know that resurrection power. Look at this. Which, is, which it exerts over believers. It moves. It, it flows through them. And that I may so share his sufferings as to be continually transformed in spirit into his likeness, even to his death in the hope. That is possible, that if possible, I may attain to the spiritual and moral resurrection that lifts me out from among the dead, even while in the body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. How many know there's coming a day, very soon, very soon, there's coming a day, very soon, very soon, I want to show you right now. I'm going to show you in just a moment. Go, go over to John 14, 6. Because you see a lot of, a lot of people are telling, a lot of people are saying that, 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 that there's other ways to heaven. Other ways to God. No, no, no. Listen to me. There's only one way. 
His name is Jesus. Just one way. Look what he said here. And Jesus said, what did he say? I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except by or through me. No one. No one. No other name given. There's, the Bible says there is no other name given on earth by which man can be saved. Amen. No other name. Was it Allah? Was it Buddha? Was it Hare Krishna? Was it no other name? No other name that can save and forgive and set free and heal and deliver because there was no one else that died and resurrected but Jesus himself. Are you with me today? It was Jesus that day. It was His blood. It was His blood. His blood. So look at this. Look at verse 1. John 14, 1. He said, Do not let your hearts be troubled, distressed, agitated. You believe and adhere to and trust in and rely on God. Believe and adhere to and trust in and rely also on me. Let's go on. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places or homes. He's, he intends to give you a place to live. No mortgage payments. Sidewalks of gold. Streets of gold. You, you, didn't, you didn't buy them. You didn't pay for them. He's given them to you. He's given them to you just for letting him into your life. Look at this. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I am going away to prepare a place for you. He says, I'm going to prepare this place for you. What for? Look at this. And when if I go and make ready a place for you, I will come back again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Is there anybody with me? Real soon, real soon, real soon, there's a day coming. Go with me to Thessalonians. Is there anybody with me today? How many believe he's raised from the dead? How many, how many believe he's alive? Go with me. First Thessalonians chapter 4. From verse 14 to verse 18. But I want you to see this with me. This is going to happen soon. Soon. Say soon. soon. If I serve Jesus. If Jesus lives in me. And I walk with Jesus. If he's my Lord. If he's my Savior. I'm going to experience this. Real soon. It's going to happen. Are you with me, church? Look what it says. Look what it says. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again. How many believe he died on the cross? And he, and he rose again. Look what it says. Even so, God will also bring with him through Jesus those who have fallen asleep and dead. Those who have died before us that served the Lord. Those who were serving the Lord and died. He's going to take him to heaven. Amen. Look at this. For this we declare to you by the Lord's own word. This is the Lord's word. That we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall in no way proceed into his presence or have any advantage at all over those who have previously fallen asleep in him in death. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud cry of summons. Amen. Come on up! Amen. Remember when he, remember when he, Lazarus, died and they had him in the tomb for four days? He, and, and they told him, Master, he's, he's already stinks. He's been dead four days. And Jesus came to the tomb and he said, move the rock. And they moved the stone. 
And Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus came out alive, jumping like this, because he, he was tied up with great clothes. And he said, go take that stuff off of him. He's alive. You don't need no great clothes. Come on, are you with me, church? Same thing's going to happen here. He's going to summon us. Come on up! And in a twinkling of an eye, a twinkle of an eye, not a blink. A blink is too slow. A twinkle of an eye. Millions upon millions in the world will disappear in a blink or a twinkle of an eye to go be with Jesus. Now look at this. With the shout of an archangel and with a blast of the trumpet of God and those who have departed this life in Christ will rise first. I got a brother and family members that are going to beat me to it, but I'll, I'll meet them there. Amen. Then we, then we, the living ones who remain on the earth, shall simultaneously be caught up along with the resurrected dead. We are, we're going to resurrect. He resurrected them. We're going to be transformed in a twinkling of an eye. We're going to resurrect from a dead form to a life form. We're going to put, come on, we'll put immortality down and we'll put, come on, we'll, it's going to be powerful. Look at this. In the clouds, we're going to be caught up along the resurrected dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so always through the eternity of eternities, we shall be with the Lord. Oh, you got to give him praise. You got to give him praise. You know why? You know why you're going to be able to be caught up? Because he resurrected first. He said, now I'm going to let them experience what I experienced. And I'm telling you something here this morning. Listen to me. I want you all to hear me. This is going to happen real soon. When? I don't know. But I believe soon. And if Jesus Christ is not your Lord, if you're not serving Him, if you got one foot in and one foot out, you won't make that. If, if you, listen to me, if you're living a life of sin out there, and you just came this morning to make your wife happy or your kids happy, you won't be there. That's not going to be you. If Jesus Christ is not your master, he's not your Lord, he's not who you live for, you won't be there. If... I, I, I want to be I want to be as honest with you as I can because I might not see many of you again for another year if the Lord tarry, or maybe I won't see you at all if He takes me in that blast. If He comes before, then I'll be gone. If 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 you're here and listen and and you mistreat the family and you're always mistreating the family and the, you mistreat the wife and you're you're very very forceful with your words and and and, and or the wife I I see some wives that are heavy duty I'm serious They told a friend of mine one day he said they they called up he was pastor in San Antonio they called the the, the phone rang and he picked up the phone and 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 and, and he answered the, the wife answered the phone and and, and there was a little girl on the other side of the phone saying, please send the pastor to stop my mommy from hitting my daddy. She, please. I said, wow. And, and so she hung up the phone. She told him, Juan, you got to go over there to stop her. Amen. And he said, no, I'm not going. <laughs> so what do you mean you're not going? He said, no. If she's beating him up that she loves him. If she don't love me, what do you think she's going to do to me?
That was wisdom. <laughs> if you're thinking, listen, if you're thinking you can be out there doing your own thing, living on drugs and doing all this, and I'm only, I'm only, you know, moderately doing this. No, listen, you won't be in that number. See, see the, the, the resurrection power of Jesus Christ is so unlimited and so powerful that it sets the captives free. It delivers you. It breaks the bondage or the control of darkness completely off your life. It does not leave you in that condition. It will never leave you there. Anybody with me? It, it, won't, it won't leave you there. Amen. you got to surrender to Him. He's got he's to have your heart. He's got to have your heart. I was telling the pastors back to whom we were talking a while back, just a while ago. I said, when I came to the Lord, I was so tired of the way I was. So tired. What I was doing, what I was living, I was the lies. I said, but I couldn't go to a place, listen to me, I couldn't go to a place where they didn't believe in the power of God to deliver me. I needed to go to a place where they believed that, that he came back from the dead, where, he, where the power of his resurrection was real, where he could deliver me. I needed, I needed to be at that very place because if I wasn't there, man, I'd walk out the same. Yeah. And you'll find many today that there's no power. They'll tell you you're all right the way you are. I'm here telling you today you're not okay the way you are. He gave his life for you. He shed his blood for you. He resurrected for you. He resurrected that you would be delivered, set free, forgiven. The chains are broken. He died so you would have to live that way. So you could be free. You wouldn't have to take the kids' money and spend it on dope and alcohol. The rent money, the bill money. But now you could save your money and, and give your family a good vacation. Gave his life to give you life. That's what he gave his life for. To give you life. To give you hope. To let you know he loved you so much. He loved you so much. Listen, I want to tell you this. Nobody ever said to us, you keep doing drugs, you're going to get hepatitis C, and you're going to die. Nobody said that to us. You keep drinking alcohol, you're going to get cirrhosis of the liver, and you're going to die. Nobody said nothing to us like that. They say, you keep living that perverted lifestyle, you're going to get AIDS, and, and you're going to die. Nobody ever told us that. But Jesus is telling us. He said, I want to keep you safe. I want to keep you from death. I came to die so you wouldn't have to die. Are you with me today? So you won't have to. That's why he came. Amen. Came to love us in a way we never knew was possible. He came to love us in a different way than we ever knew. 
him to love us with an ultimate love. With an extreme love. But it costed him his life. It costed him everything he was. And then he resurrected. And what is he doing in heaven today? You know, the Bible says he's seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. He seated, he's seated at the, hand, at the right hand of power. And he said these words. He says, all power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Amen. I think that Jesus resurrected. Look at him. Walk up and down there. Walk around there. Come on down. Come on down and walk around this altar. Let him tell him, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Tell him, I'm alive. Why are you putting yourself through all the misery of life when I can help you? I'm alive. I'm alive. Why are you putting yourself through all the mess when you don't have to? You don't have to. I'm alive. Thank you, brother. Let's go that way. I want you to bow your head with me. I'm going to have Sister Becky come. Hallelujah. I want you to bow your head all, all over this place. Because this is one of the most important moments of your whole life. Because I said I may not see you again for I don't know how long. And I may not even see you here. Maybe, maybe I'll never see you again unless you make this decision. Unless you make the right decision. But there are many of you in this room right now, you need, you need Jesus. You need it to come into your heart. You need it to come into your life. And if that's you, I'm going to ask you to do something with me. I'm, I'm going to just ask you to step out of your seat. And I'm going to ask you to come and stand right here with me. I'm going to ask you to just come, stand right here with me. Don't be afraid. This is between you and God. Come and stand right here. He died for you. He gave his life for you. Come. Come. He gave his life for you. If you're upstairs, come on down the stairs. Just come on the side of the stairs. Come. Come on down here. Come, come over here. Come, come through this side. Come through this side over here. You need Jesus. Come. Don't, 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 let, don't let the devil lie to you today. Don't let him tell you you'll have another time. Don't, don't let him tell you, listen, that, that preacher's lying to you. Listen, I'm telling you the truth today. The only, the only answer you have to your whole life is Jesus. The only answer you have is Jesus. Now listen, I'm going to ask you to do something with me. I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to, ask you to stretch your hand out this way. I don't want anybody leaving, not even from the balcony yet, because I want to make another altar call in just a moment. I want to pray with you. I want to pray right here with you right now. I want you to repeat this prayer with me. I want you to mean it with all your heart. I want you to mean it to the Lord. Because Jesus, by faith, is going to come into your heart today. Today, he's going to come into your life and he's going to set you free. Are you with me? Say this with me. Dear God in heaven, I come before you right now. And I confess with all my heart and with all my soul, I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. And I'm so sorry, God. 
please forgive me. Forgive me for all my sin. Wash my heart with the blood you shed on the cross. I believe you gave your life just for me. And I believe you resurrected from the dead to give me new life. To give me victory. And today, I receive you. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord, my Savior, and my God. I will serve you from now on. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen to me. Listen to me. You that are up here, I want you, I want you to follow Sister Terry and her husband. They're going to take you through that door over there. I want you to follow them. And they're going to talk to you for a minute. They're going to pray with you again. They're going to talk to you and share with you so that you'll know what to do. Okay? Follow them. Give the Lord praise. Now, I want you to look at me over here. There are many of you here. You're going through things in your life. There are things going on even in your home, your household. You need God. You need God to help you. You claim to know Jesus. You claim to know him as your master, your Lord, your God. There's no need to be afraid or ashamed of anything because listen to me today. Every one of us passes through those valleys in life. But I thank the Lord tonight that he's alive because we can call out to him and he's there and he's ready to help us. If you need help right now, if you need the Lord to help you in your home, your life, your marriage, whatever it is, your children, whatever it is, I want you to come and stand right here with me. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Come on. Whatever the need is, we want you to come. You may be living a double life. You need, you, need to, you need to come this morning and tell the Lord, Lord, I don't want to be like that. I want to live for you. Amen. Move on up as much as you can. Come. Hallelujah. Come. I want you to know this morning, look up here at me, church. I want you to know I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Yes. Give the Lord praise. Jesus gave his life, listen to me, because he knew also we would need him to make it through. He knew that. He knew that the devil would not give up easily. He knew that. So he said this in the book of Psalms, he says, you call out to me. You call out to me in the day of your need, and I'll answer you. He resurrected from the dead, and that's why we can stand here today, and we can talk to the Lord. And we can ask the Lord for help, and he'll come and help us. Because he's got the power to do it. I want you to lift your hands. 
I'm going to pray for you first, and then I want you to pray for yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus today, you see every life here. You see every home represented here today. Father, I pray that you would extend your mighty hand to them. I pray, Lord, that you would help them with any need, every need they may have in their lives. Whatever it may be, Father, today I pray that you, Father, would move mightily, Father, upon their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We take authority over the powers of darkness. We take authority over Satan's forces. And we break his power off of their lives and off of their homes, off their marriages, off their children, off their finances. We, we command the devil to just move away right now. Loose them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that your mighty hand will come upon them, that you would bless them. Extend your hand to them this day, Lord, and meet every need they may have, I ask, in Jesus' mighty name. Let it be done. And we thank you, Lord. Amen. I want you to lift your hands, and I want you to begin to talk to the Lord right now. All over this place, you talk to him. You share the need. You tell the Lord the need you got. You tell him right now, Lord, this is what I need you to help me with. I need you to do this, Lord. I can't do it on my own. Hallelujah. Jesus, have your way, my God. Take over, Lord. the devil. He defeated the devil for you. He defeated the enemy. Come on. Come on, lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Talk to him. Tell him right now, Lord. Take over. Take over every need, every problem I got. Lord, I give it to you. I bring it under the blood. <laughs> 